Toronto was once described as a city of churches and chestnuts. To that we can add synagogues, minarets and a myriad of meeting halls for every denomination and culture imaginable. The the history of the cathedrals starts right back to the beginning when the Simcoes first arrived, they had a service of Thanksgiving under the trees. It's recorded in Mrs. Simcoe's diary. It was a wilderness in 1793. And so the church building was not on the top of the list of priorities, especially when we could meet in the Parliament buildings. A church rose in 1807. The plain wooden building was known as the Church at York. Burned to the ground and rebuilt twice, by 1839 the latest version of the church had been made a cathedral under Bishop Strahan. After the next fire, St. James rose grandly in Gothic revival, a fitting place of worship for the new city. chancel area is by far the most elaborate part of the cathedral. Um, the ceiling, very, they're painted with huge gold acanthus leaves, the angels peering through them, the pillars on each side of the chancel with carved capitals, the windows with traceries, quite common to design a window inspired by paintings, well-known paintings. So you see the Last Supper that was inspired by da Vinci. You see the ascension aspired by Raphael. Other windows trace the spread of Christianity from Palestine to Rome to England and finally to Toronto. That's Bishop Strahan holding the plans for St. James. On his death, he was buried under the high altar. At one of our early minute books. The cathedral's archives preserve minutes from town meetings and regimental colors from as far back as 1807 and a Bible that's been signed by royal visitors, from King George VI to Prince Harry. And Harry had just learned to sign his name, and we'd normally have had children sign the book, but Harry wanted to sign. So, of course, William wanted to sign as well. And so this is, I believe, they only signed as a family in one other. We have actual photographs that were taken from the tower, and you can see how close the lake was. We have sailing ships tied at the docks there, just directly to the south of us. To pay the bills in those early days, churches sold pews, otherwise you sat with the so-called poor people. Bishop Strahan set out to build a church where the pews would be free, and so was born Holy Trinity Church, tucked in beside the Eaton Centre, and, at King and Parliament, the oldest surviving Tudor Gothic building, Little Trinity Church. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.